Good day, everybody, and what's up? Welcome to the podcast for Selfless Sex and She Comes First. My name is Dr. Nick Meyer, sitting here on Sunday, February the 20th. I'm going to post this on 022222, and I realize I'll never see that date again in my lifetime, but it just sounds fun for me. But anyhow, I hope everyone out there is doing well. And once again, I want to thank everyone for all of the support on the various podcast sites, iTunes, Spotify, etc. Still hoping to get on Pandora within the very near future. But anyhow, and um, oh, just a quick housekeeping note for the Facebook page and the Facebook group. I noticed that there has been a lot of interest in the Facebook page and the Facebook group, which is great. And just to just to let you know, it's easier to get into the Facebook page just hit the like button and you're in. And But if you want to get into the Facebook group, you've got to read and agree to the, to the group rules before I or my admins can let you in. That's just how it goes. So once you agree to them, you're welcome to come on in. Also, I, I just want to welcome all of the new members to the Facebook group. It's great to see you guys in there making conversations and such on and so forth. You guys are awesome. Real talk. So today, I want to continue my quote unquote women who series that I started last month called the women who watch pornography. So today, this episode is called women who read erotica. And so as I was researching erotica and erotic novels and erotic fiction for this podcast, I learned a whole bunch. I never knew that so much was out there and how big it actually was. But let's talk about that today. To begin, I had no clue that the romance novels and the erotic novels and erotica, that whole genre was as big as it actually is. Because I recognized some of the names, but I I did not know that they were writing erotica or romance novels like that. Like Anna Todd has has a series out there, Sylvia Day has a series, Daniel Daniel Steele's been writing this stuff for decades. And in the black community, you might remember Zane with her Addicted series and and the movie and the Sex Chronicle series that was on Cinemax. But right now, everyone's talking about the big elephant in the room, Fifty Shades of Grey by E.L. James. I didn't touch that stuff. It's not really my stuff to read, but Apparently, that trilogy of three books sold 150 million copies, was translated into 52 different languages, and was made into three movies where the box office was $1.3 billion. Everyone pretty much said and agreed that the books were not really that well written, and they had that element of like BDSN in them where people could not really get into. But in my head, I'm thinking, just imagine if, they, if those were like well-written books. Just think about that for a second. Of course, I have to mention some scientific research. And there was a study done by the National Library of Medicine in 2017, which found that 90% of women use something called mental framing or something also known as scenario conjuring to get aroused. And that pretty much means as the women read the erotic stories, they are making up these imaginary scenarios within the story to turn themselves on. And then additionally, research done in 2009 found that women became aroused by the context of the erotic story rather than the visual offerings that are typically presented in pornography. So bottom line here, as women read the erotic stories, they are using their imagination to turn themselves on. Erotica is also very empowering. If you think about it, in mainstream porn, sex is something that is being done to the female, which typically ends with male ejaculation. But with erotica, the power is back in a woman's hands to the point where she is in control of her sexuality. And Eleanor McKenzie, who is the editor-in-chief of a subscription-based service called LVH, she says this, quote, Porn tends to classify women 
as good girls or sluts and doesn't empower women at all. Women have had their sexuality repressed for so long that we're not sure how to be ourselves when it comes to expressing what gives us pleasure and that harms our relationships. She continues, the erotic stories give women all of that important context with characters they can emotionally identify with and sexual fantasies that they can engage with using their own imagination to personalize it and frame the story within what turns them on. When women are able to draw inspiration from a character that we can relate to, it gives us permission to say, yes, I'd like to do that too. So to continue, there's something in erotica that women seem to really enjoy, which is called wish fulfillment. Generally speaking, pornography is made for the male gaze, but in erotica, the sex itself really doesn't matter. It's more like a cherry on top, but it's the tension, it's the buildup between the characters, it's the character development and the sexual tension that, that appears between the characters. And when they finally end up having sex, the women are using their imagination to make this whole scene play out. And Eleanor McKenzie says this again, quote, erotica goes much deeper than porn, if you have to pardon that phrase. It provides a fantasy and a way to escape everyday life. Rough P in V sex or the money shot just does not do it for women. They want to be seduced. They want a life that's glamorous, sexy, and pretty. Contrary to popular belief, it is not just about the sex. It's about having the life of someone who is desired, who is craved, and having lots and lots of sex because of that. The sex is just a happy consequence. And finally, there is more of an emotional aspect when it comes to reading erotic novels and, and romance novels when, it, when compared to general pornography. Erotica seems to fulfill that women's need because erotica seems to fulfill a, a woman's need for that connection and that erotic connection where pornography typically does not. And to continue again with Eleanor McKenzie, she says, quote, in general, women prefer reading adult romance novels and erotica rather than watching porn because the emotional context is far more important for a woman's sexual arousal than for a man. Then to take it a step further, Megan White, who is a certified clinical sexologist, she says this, quote, women are sensitive creatures endowed with a multi-sensory pleasure map that includes details of physicality, sensitivities to touch, aroma, lighting, plot line, etc. We remember these details and use them to connect the dots to our own pleasure maps. Edging a woman's excitement is exactly what erotica is so good at doing. By oftentimes holding back overt sexual contact and instead stimulating simultaneous sexual cues embedded within authentic sexual tension, it allows a woman's innate ability to map into the layers of details that form her unique sexual template. So it seems like the women who read erotica are very good at keeping track of the small details of the plot line and who's doing what with who, and also keeping track of the character development and the sexual tension that develops between the characters. To the point where when those characters finally do come together for a sexual activity, the explicit details of that sexual activity are not needed because the women are using their own quote unquote sexual maps, which is supported by their own erotic imagination. So I just wanna say in closing, I find this utterly fascinating just to find out how different people respond to different stimuli versus guys can sit there and watch porn and get turned on. And some women may, some women may not, but instead of watching porn, give her a book to read. And she's, it seems like according to research that she's funneling it through her own history, quote unquote, her sexual mapping, which is supported by her erotic, um, her, her, her erotic history, her erotic behaviors of the past. So, wow, this is, really interesting to me. 
So in closing, my question is twofold, which goes back to something that I mentioned early on about the mental framing and using your imagination when you read erotica. Are you, so when you read the erotica, are you like a fly on the wall watching people engage in this activity or like, like you're watching the story take place or number two, are you actually taking the place of the main female character? So you're actually acting it out in the story or like you're using your, your imagination to be a part of the story, if that's a better question. Does it depend on the type of story or the situation? I really don't know. That's why I'm, I'm asking. And um, I just realized somehow I ended up with some erotica on my own by Anne Rice, um, The Erotic Stories of Sleeping Beauty. And I, I, I should read that pretty soon because I've never read it before. And I wonder how me just being a regular guy will, will respond to reading erotica. And yes, I've read it before, but you know what I mean? Not the good stuff. And also, I always wondered how women would would respond to audio sexual activity, where like you can't see it, just put headphones on and listen to it. More than 10 years ago, I bought a CD called Cybergasm. And there's two of them, Cybergasm 1 and Cybergasm 2. And they were recorded in such a weird way where it sounds like if you, if you put on headphones, like the people were engaging in sexual activity like right in front of you. So you could definitely use your imagination for that. And I found that very erotic as well. So I wonder if guys would like to listen to something like that. But still, I mean, this is a pretty long podcast. I know because this one, um, I really had to dig down and do some research on this stuff because I, I didn't really know. But I find it utterly fascinating, as I said before. So on that note, I'm out. You guys have a great day. Stay tuned. I'll talk to you soon.